get out of here, world, that it, it's Axiom's turn. I can confidently say that Axiom is the greatest builder mod ever introduced to Minecraft. And exactly a week before this video was published, it ended its beta run and was officially released to the public with a ton of new features. I've been using and learning nothing but Axiom this past month. So today I'd like to share with you how you can get started with Axiom's builder tools and start building like never before. The first step of using Axiom is, of course, downloading Axiom. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to Axiom's Discord. There, you'll find the download channel, with a link to the latest edition of the mod. Once installed, hop into a single player world to get started. Let's start with the most obvious tool. You'll notice, if you're in creative mode, that there's a 10th slot in your hotbar. And when you first join a world, it'll be this little four-way arrow thing by default. You can either scroll to it or navigate to it by pressing zero on your keyboard. This is your builder tool slot, and by pressing left alt, you'll see all of your options, and you can navigate to any of them by holding left alt and using your scroll wheel. Let's learn how to use these tools one by one, starting with the default move tool. This tool is used to, you guessed it, move things. Much like world edit, you can select the area by left clicking to set your first position and right clicking to set the second position. Note, you can do this from any range. You can then change the positions by left and right clicking until you have the selection you'd like. You can also extend the bounding box of your selection by clicking your middle mouse button. This is very useful for selecting weird shapes where you don't have any solid blocks in the corners. If it feels like I'm over explaining this selection process, I, I promise I'm not. A lot of the tools behave similarly. Similarly? Similarly? So it's important to know how the left, right, and middle mouse button work when making a selection. Anyways, back to the move tool. Once you have your area selected, it's as easy as using the scroll wheel to move it around. There will be a glass imprint left behind to know where you're moving it from, and you can simply left click to cancel the movement, or right click to finalize the action. Unlike world edit, which requires a tedious typing of slash slash undo. Axiom allows for Control Z to undo a recent action. You can also redo an action by pressing Control Y, allowing for easy before and after comparisons. Control Z and Control Y are applicable to all the builder tools, so keep it swimming in the back of your mind, eh? Something else important to note is that after selecting and before pasting, you can also rotate your selection 90 degrees clockwise with Control R, or flip your selection with Control F. Last note of the move tool, if you start to move a selection and then use the number keys to change to a different slot, it will finalize the action. But, like, you know, Control Z exists, so you'll be fine if you didn't mean to do that. The next tool we're gonna cover is the clone tool. The clone tool works exactly the same as the move tool, the only difference being that it leaves the previous selection after you right click to finalize the action. Apart from that, all the other notes I mentioned concerning the move tool apply here. Control R to rotate, Control F to flip, Control Z to undo an action, and Control Y to redo an action. It's important to note that the air blocks of your selection, whether you're cloning or moving, will not paste in, much like the minus A parameter in world edit. Lastly, after pasting, the buffer remains active, meaning you can paste the same copy multiple times before left-clicking to cancel. This saves a lot of valuable time by only needing to make a selection once. The stack tool works almost the same as the clone tool, but operates on a grid instead. Once you make your selection, you can use the scroll wheel to stack the selection end-to-end -end in any direction your camera is facing. This is great for stacking segments of walls or floors, and is probably my most used builder tool. Smear is an interesting builder tool in that it will smear your selection from where you start to where you stop scrolling. It's kind of like using slash slash line function in world edit, but for every block in your selected area. It's a pretty niche tool, useful for wireframing builds with a lot of angles or creating long hallways. But I personally haven't found too much use for this bad boy yet. Let me know what you think about it down below. I feel like that there's potential that I'm just not tapping into. The next tool we're taking a peek at is the extrude tool. When you right click with the extrude tool, it you guessed it, extrudes. It finds all connecting matching blocks and stacks them on the face you clicked on. Left click will do the exact same thing, but removes blocks instead of placing them. It's important to note that when it selects all similar blocks, it will only work if they're in the same block state. Extruding a line of stairs, for example, will only stack stairs that are in the same orientation. Extrude is a decently useful tool, but you'll often find it's hard to know when to use stack and when to use extrude. I found a good rule of thumb is when you're extending for a long distance, it's easier to use a scroll wheel with the stack tool than to constantly right click with the extrude tool. But if your selection is an odd shape, you'll probably be able to save time by using extrude 
rather than taking the time for a weird selection with stack. The last of the builder tools here is the erase tool. The erase tool works much like the other tools. Make your selection by using left and right click and use the middle mouse button to extend the selection to whichever block you click. Unlike the other tools, to activate the erase ability, you have to press delete on your keyboard. It then replaces all the blocks in your selection to air. The erase tool is incredibly useful, as it is, apart from using left click with the extrude tool, the only way to remove blocks rather than to add them. Being able to view your selection prior to deleting it is what makes it so much more useful than world edit slash slash set air, as you can visualize what you're removing before it's removed. Now that you have a basic understanding of the builder tools, let's check out the hotbar menu. You can activate the hotbar functions by pressing and holding left alt when using any of the nine normal hotbar spaces. Here, you'll see a menu with a wide variety of options. So let's start in the bottom right corner and work our way up and around. Here in this corner, you can see a box with an X in it. This is essentially a trash can, much like the one in the normal creative inventory, where you can dispose of items by clicking and dragging them into it. Right above the trash can, we have the flight speed control. By clicking and dragging in this meter, you'll change your flight speed, multiplied by the percentage displayed. It goes all the way up to 10 times flight speed. And yes, that is 10 times flight speed, even though it says 999, don't pay attention to that, and helps you navigate your world with speed. Meow. It really helps out, just like how our wonderful Patreons, Skeeter, Milky, Grant Cherskin, Broski, Jomies, and our brand new Patreons, Era, iDog, Ninjax, Bahu, and iHacksari, as well as all the wonderful channel members and those who donate during streams help out the channel. If I could take a quick moment to be sincere, the support lately has been insane. We weren't able to reach our goal of 14,000 subscribers by the end of August. Yeah, we'll definitely get there by the end of September, but we broke 10,000 subscribers and I could not be more grateful. There will be a 10k subscriber celebration soon, as well as an awesome schematic that will be released with next Monday's video. Thanks again for everything y'all do. Much love, guys. Back to the guide, the next thing we'll cover is this mass of inventory slots in the middle of your screen. These are essentially more hotbars for you to use. You can move items into them and scroll to them using the scroll wheel. And combined with Creative Mode's saved hotbar functions, there's countless options on how to use these. Right above the extra hotbars, you'll find a game mode changer. While I often use the F3, F4 function to swap back and forth between game modes, this game mode swapper is preferable, as once you have changed to survival, adventure, or spectator mode, all you have to do is press left alt to change back to creative. I found that this is really useful for minigame or adventure map creators who want to quickly test out a mechanic outside of creative mode. And now, we're getting to the real meat and potatoes of this mod, as the options on the left side of the screen are probably some of the most overpowered tools for builders. Starting from the top and working our way down, first we have Infinite Reach, which, as the name and description implies, removes the 5 block reach limit when in creative mode. When selected by left clicking on the icon, this allows you to pick, place, or break blocks from a distance. Very useful for moments where you don't want to open up the inventory to grab a specific block that you need. It should be noted that this only works with blocks, and you can't interact with mobs from a distance. The next option is the Tinker Tool, and holy smokes, never turn this off! The Tinker Tool is an incredibly powerful tool that mimics the debug stick, but is a lot more intuitive and has a couple additional features. Using the Tinker Tool, you can manipulate blocks into stairs, stairs into slabs, change wall orientations, strip logs, change drip leaf states, add a bottom to scaffolding, light candles, open trapdoors, and so much more. Genuinely, the uses for the Tinker Tool are almost uncountable. If you would like to see a more in-depth review on how this particular tool can be used with others, check out my Axiom Mod Review Part 1 and 2. You won't be disappointed. And if you are, I'll rewind time. It's fine. Just go watch those videos after this one. I, I don't know. These next two tools, No Updates and Force Place, I'll show in tandem because of how well they work together. No Updates, when selected, does what it says on the tin. Placing blocks will not update neighboring blocks, so you don't have to worry about work you've done with the Tinker Tool being destroyed. Things like two tall flowers can become three tall flowers when you pair no updates with force place, which allows you to place blocks where you generally could not. This has all been possible in the past with different mods, but in my opinion, Axiom allows for the easiest implementation. Place saplings on stone, make skulk vein blocks, enjoy floating lanterns, put floating lanterns inside skulk vein blocks? Feel free to experiment! After a while, you'll start to see the potential of Tinker, no updates, and force place, and how they all work together to allow for an insane amount of micro detailing. These next two tools are incredibly intuitive, to the point where you probably don't need me to explain them. But this is a guide, so I'm going to explain them. Replace mode allows you to break blocks, but changes the place block action to a replace block action, allowing you to change swaths of blocks at once. 
Bulldozer bypasses the breaking block cooldown, allowing you to bulldoze lots of blocks at once. Be careful though, if you have far reach enabled, you might break more than you intended to, so make sure that you, you know, break responsibly. Enhanced Flight is definitely an acquired taste, as using it removes the creative drifting and swaps it with the ability to move any direction your camera is pointing. I don't particularly like it, but everybody's playstyle is unique, and anything that helps you build better and faster, you should not feel weird about using. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth guide on the builder tools of Axiom. The right shift menu is a whole nother beast that I felt deserved its own tutorial. So if you want to see that, please leave a like to let me know. And uh, yeah, that'll about do it for today. Peace.